This is NGRX Made Easier by an X with an X. And I'm Eric Slack. A little about me. I'm a TL at Cisco where I build the next generation of tools for managing networks, devices, and so much more. It's a fantastic company to work for in case you're looking. I'm also grateful to be a GDE in Angular. And along with Brooke Avery, I host the Angular Experience podcast. Come check us out. I'm the director of the Angular Community Meetup as well. The following are my opinions, along with a little bit of advice that you might find useful if you like NGRX. There are many fantastic front-end JavaScript frameworks out there, but Angular is my favorite. It's helped me create scalable applications written in TypeScript for years now. Leveraging NX is my favorite way to build Angular apps these days. I even use it for my smaller projects now. NGRX is the best tool for managing state in Angular apps to this date. Every year it gets easier and easier to use and more optimized thanks to its fantastic contributors and its wide acceptance at Google and the community. I'm going to focus on NGRX and a few ways how NX has made doing NGRX easier. I love the tech that I'm going to show you today. However, I'm not going to go in too much depth. I've given multiple talks publicly and at work about NGRX fundamentals. In these talks, I demonstrated how to use NGRX store and effects to build state management for your Angular apps. However, today I'm just going to share a tip about how to make using NGRX more efficient using NX. There are four integral pieces of NGRX state, NGRX store, and one optional one. Action file, selector file, reducer file, effects file, and optionally a fifth facade file. Since this is a lightning talk, I'll only have time to show you a little bit. First, I want to show you how to do it manually if you're going to add a new state. Second, I'll show you how to do it using the CLI using the NGRX schematic. And third, I'll show you how to do it using the CLI using NX NGRX schematic, which is, in my opinion, the best way to do this. It's demo time, which is not to be confused with deno time, but that's also fun. Let's move over to VS Code. In here, you can see that I have my app module open. And in my app module, I have a couple of stores already. So I've installed NGRX and I have two stores, once for listings, once for events. I'm gonna add a third store. Okay, well, how do you add a third store? Well, if you're doing it manually and have to add a new folder, and let's say this is gonna be the widget store. So I created the folder and then I go in and I create a file. All right, I don't just make one file, I actually end up with a lot more than that. So we talked about how there's the four, potentially five files, and then you have to test them, so there's gonna be spec files for each one of those as well. Well, that is time consuming. And notice that I have quite a bit of, in each one of these, it's not a ton. And that's sort of the, that's sort of awesome about NGRX, is like, you can keep your files separate and small. All right, so in any case, I don't want to do it manually. The better way is to do it with the CLI. Well, I like to use the NX console, which is a an extension you can get for VS Code, also created by our wonderful hosts, Narwhal. Thank you, Narwhal team who built NX console and continues to maintain it. So in here, I can click generate and I can type in NGRX. And you'll notice that there's NGRX schematics and then there's the Narwhal Angular NGRX schematic. So these schematics are provided if you download the NPM module which is NGRX schematic. And they're only so good. They are helpful, it's better than manual. Um, let me show you real quick how that is. Let's choose feature. It's sort of hard to figure out like which one to start with, but I start with feature. I'm gonna throw widgets in here. I'm gonna choose, nope, I'm gonna choose meetup. There we go. That's the application that I'm adding it to. And I'll turn off flat for now. Okay, and then I'm going to run that. This dry run is already happening in the console here and it looks like it succeeded. So we go here and we check it out and we get see all of the files that were created. I've got to say that these files are actually very minimal and it actually didn't add anything to our app module here. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. And let's see what it's how it's done if we use the um, NX and GRX schematic. And GRX, here we go. If we use the Narwhal schematic, then things are going to be better. And let me show you how. So first, let me add widgets. I'm going to now choose 
um, tell it where to find the module that it's supposed to add it to, which is kind of nice because it will update the module for me. All right, once this catches up, it should work. I'm telling it to put it in the plus state folder, which is perfect. And we're going to add a facade because I like to use facades just because it reduces the amount of um, imports that I have to do in all of my components. Okay, so now I have my widgets that were created by um, by this other schematic. Notice how much more is already set up for me. Another thing that's worth noting is that an X provides this fetch and some other commands as well. It's update optimistically and update pessimistically, which aren't being used in the generated one because this is just showing you the load. These have benefits as well, and they sort of make it easier to, to know. They take care of what RxJS is used under the hood. It's fantastic. All right, well, that has been all I have time for. In conclusion, I'd like to invite you to join our meetup and sharpen your Angular skills. You can also listen to the podcast that I run with Brooke, and it's called the Angular Experience. You can find it on all the major platforms. And most of all, thank you. And I hope you enjoy the rest of this conference.